Yo. Hey, Marcus. Who we got on the line? Uh, we got, uh, I think the whole crew. David Moore here. Who else? Got Archer. Tyler. Tyler. Okay, we got the whole crew. <laughs> All right. So who's, who's first? Uh, I'll start it off. You can just go ahead and talk about your uh, willingness and motivation to, to restructure your contract to stay here. Just uh, tell us about that a little bit and, and what drove you to do that. Yeah, uh, uh, you know, just being a cowboy for life is always, you know, a dream. And, you know, uh, I was blessed with the opportunity to do so. So, uh, I mean, there's, there's no reason why, you know, I go against, you know, my dreams and uh, admirations of, you know, being a cowboy for life. So, uh, you know, once the opportunity presented itself, uh, it was a no-brainer. Marcus, did you think you'd be able to figure things out to stay for 2022? And at what point did you realize you were coming back to Dallas? Uh, yeah, I had high hopes, uh, you know, that we'll figure something out. Um, you know, it's all in, you know, being able to negotiate and, uh, both parties, uh, really, uh, getting what both deserves out of the deal. So if both parties can, you know, uh, get it down to where both sides are satisfied, uh, that's how, you know, things work and, uh, that's how we was able to get it done. I agree to do this. Not only do you become the Cowboys for life, but you help the Cowboys and the president with a lot of cap space. Does that mean something to you to help the team in the immediate future? Yeah, of course. Uh, you know, I feel like uh, we as strong as our, you know, weakest link. So, you know, if if we're not building and putting strong players around us, uh, we're not going to be able to get better. So uh, I feel like, you know, that was one of the reasons, you know, I, I restructured, but also, uh, you know, being able to, you know, finish where I started and also, you know, uh, have another opportunity to, you know, go for a Super Bowl, um, you know, I don't want to do it nowhere else. So uh, I made that decision a long time ago, and, you know, I'm just glad I'm still here. Marcus, why is it so important to be a Cowboy for life? Because, um... Really, you don't want all your hard work to uh, really go go un. I can't say the word, but uh, you really don't want all your hard work to go unnoticed, and you know, really um, being able to you know finish the fight where you started. You know, I, I know a lot of players wish you know they had the opportunity to do that, uh, but you know, it don't happen that that way uh, for everybody. So. Um, I'm just fortunate, you know, and uh, shoot, just glad that I'm in the position I'm in. Marcus, what does it mean to get a play for Dan for another year, and what can the defense do in the second year of this system? You said something about Dan Quinn, right? Yeah, what does it mean to play for Dan another year, and how can the defense go to the next level in the second year of this system? Right. Uh, yeah. So uh, being that it was my first year with Dan, and uh, you know, uh, I only had the opportunity to play what seven, eight games with him. Uh, so I ain't even get a full uh, season with uh, DQ yet. So uh, you know, being able to you know go into off season, uh, you know, being able to have his guidance and uh, you know train with him, train with the guys on the team. Uh, I feel like you know it'll, it'll make us more complex. Uh, you know, uh, being able to, you know, understand his playbook, his style of play, and also, you know, uh, you know, kick it up a notch from last year. Uh, I feel like we built a good foundation last year, and there's, you know, uh, time to build on top of that. Marcus, what was your reaction to, do? What was your reaction to Randy Gregory uh, going to Denver? Obviously, I, I know you wanted him to stay in Dallas, but what did you think when he ended up signing that deal with Denver? Yeah, it was a shock to me, uh, um, you know, um, I heard the news just like everybody else, like, you know, Randy uh, signed with the Cowboys and, you know, after my workout, I got home and, you know, on Instagram, Twitter, I seen, you know, he signed with the Broncos, uh, you know, but, you know, Randy's a brother for life. Uh, you know, I don't wish nothing but the best for him. I'm glad, you know, he, he got paid, you know, like he deserved to get paid, uh, you know, but it's it's a new chapter in his life and, uh, you know, our lives too, the Cowboys' lives too. So, uh, you know, uh, best best to Randy, you know, but, you know, we still got, you know, dreams and admirations that we have to reach for. So, you know, we got to 
let it be what it is. Besides Randy, you also lost a couple of guys on offense, Amari and Lyle. What's your sense overall? Are you a little concerned of the talent that you lost, or are you feeling confident that the roster will be what it needs to be? Hey, y'all been seeing what's going on in the NFL lately? Like, I've been seeing, like, all 32 teams, you know, trading, losing players, players going, I don't, I don't even know the rosters of half of these teams no more. Uh, so – uh, just, you know, being able to see all the different changes and stuff, it's going to be an exciting year, you know. Marcus, how good can this defense be in the second year with Dan? I mean, you keep Curse, you keep Leighton, you keep uh, yourself and Dorrance, you know. Where can this defense improve? Uh, by keeping up. Keeping up, obviously you lose Randy, but by keeping a lot of you guys, too. Right. Um, I feel like... Hey, can you pa- uh, put it on mute? You got static in the background. That's Clarence. Yeah, uh, yeah. I feel like uh, you know we can uh, build on the foundation that we uh, made last year. Uh, you know, I feel like we got a, a bunch of great young guys that's in the room. Um, that's good players. They they listen well. Uh, they respect the game and. Uh, you know, we got some good vets um, in the room that, you know, know how to play and uh, respect the game and also wants to get better and better. So uh, just, you know, going out there, uh, you know, making that bond in the locker room, understanding each other's uh, strengths and weaknesses and, uh, you know, just being able to grow with each other. I, I feel like, you know, that, that'll that take us to the next level, uh, you know. Marcus, when was the last time you had a full, healthy offseason? How long, how excited are you just to, to be healthy and play a full season? Right. Uh, <clears throat> put it on mute for me, Clarence. Um, you know, like it's, it's, it's been a while since I had a, a healthy offseason, but, you know, uh, all glory to God, uh, you know, to be able to bring me to this point that I can have a healthy offseason, I can enjoy it. Uh, I can move around and, you know, train like I want to and, you know, be able to uh, get better and grow from uh, last season. So, uh, yeah, I'm just blessed and, you know, thankful that I am healthy this off season. Last year you did more work <clears throat> inside in and like three technique. Uh, knowing that you could do more of that this season, does that inform your training at all? Like do you spend more time on – different techniques or otherwise to prepare for that? Or is it, I mean, you, you seem like it was pretty transferable and you took naturally to it. Does it just come naturally and you don't have to necessarily train for it? Uh, <clears throat> I mean, uh, I feel like once you're a D lineman, uh, you start to understand uh, each position around you and uh, understand uh, what the guy uh, next to you does. So uh, when, once you really start understanding what your teammate next to you uh, do and and how to do it, it makes your job easier. So uh, being able to move inside and, uh, you know, move, move like a D-tackle, run the plays like a D-tackle, it makes my job at defensive end easier because I know how to play off of the D-tackle now. So, uh, yeah, uh, my off-season workouts, uh, it really don't change because I move inside and outside. I mean, it's just really about the pass rush move. So. Uh, that's all that I, I really work on uh, definitely is my pass rush move from the inside to the outside. And along those Marcus, lines, what, do you know about, what do you know about that State Fowler and just how important is it to have a strong edge rusher on the opposite side of you? You said what do I know about him? Yeah, what do you know about Dante? Do you know much about it, his game or anything like that? Uh, no, I, I actually don't know a lot about his game. Um, I know he... Uh, that uh, DQ coached him uh, back in Atlanta a couple of years ago, but uh, don't know a lot about his game. Uh, I know uh, that he's he's coming in here to you know help us win. Um, you know he's coming to get better, and shoot, that's all I can ask from you know a guy uh, you know coming here each and every day and get better and you know find a way to help us win. Mark, I mean, you guys heard of the captain's workouts yet? <laughs> All right. One at a time, what you say? DeMarc, have you guys started your captain's workouts yet? I know guys usually get in there before the start of the program. Have you guys started doing that stuff yet? 
Yeah, we we actually started last week uh, on the 16th, and uh, yeah, they've been kicking our ass. What's the benefit? What's the benefit of those workouts, and how do they help you when you get the real off season program, and then when you get into the season? Uh, you know, just being able to push yourself beyond your limits. Um, once once you start early in the off season, that you know, keep stacking those blocks on top of each other and uh, keep building. Uh, who says the sky's the limit? Because I believe that's a lie. So, uh, you know, just being able to, you know, just keep getting better. Uh, you know, by the time the season comes around, it's no telling how good you can be, you know. So um, that's that's all it is to it is, you know, start early, you know, prepare early and get ready. So once that time comes, you don't have to get ready. You're already ready. Marcus, how much have you seen Micah in the, yep. Marcus, Micah in the off season, and um, where can he grow the most or on and off the field before year two? All right, uh, I'm gonna let y'all in to something. So I just uh, resigned my deal like a, a week ago, so I actually haven't been in the building that much. Um, but you know, now that I am back, um, you know, I, I feel like you know Micah. Is Michael? Um, you know, everybody knows about his speed, uh, his agility. Uh, you know, just the type of athlete he is. Um, where I think he can get better at is, you know, uh, being more of a leader, um, understanding that he's our Mike linebacker and he can tell us whatever the hell he wants to tell us, and we gotta abide by it. You know, so uh, once he figured it, figures that out. I feel like he'll be a great leader and he'll really be running the show. Kind of an extension of that question about the healthy off season, DeMarcus, after missing the pretty big chunk of time with the foot last year, how motivated are you for this season to be one where you show some of that production from some of those years where you were healthy all the way through? Yeah, man, I'm, I'm very excited. Uh, you know, just, like you said, being able to have a, a healthy off season, uh, it, it it can help propel my my season, you know, to one that I had re, uh, a couple of years ago. But uh, I'm not trying to be the player that I was a couple of years ago. I'm trying to, you know, top that. I'm trying to be better than what I used to be. Um, trying to learn from my mistakes, and also, you know, I'm trying to make the guys around me better. You know, so uh, understanding, you know, like. The year that I, I did have, you know, 14 and a half sacks or whatever, shit, the, at, as a team, we ain't amount to shit. So what what does that really matter, you know? Uh, so it, it's all about, yeah, production, but also making sure we were productive and we won the games. Hey, guys, I appreciate the call. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks. Appreciate it. Thanks, Marcus.